Welcome to VIP Day at another Operation Water Hill Preparedness 2024. My name is Andrea Gomez and I'll be your Madam of Ceremonies this morning. I'm also the Community Engagement Director for Cameron County Public Health. It is with great pleasure that I present uh, the presentation of colors performed by members of the Rivera Early College High School TX 922nd Air Force Junior Reserve Officer Training Corps Group. We will now have our presentation for national anthem performance by Dr. Isela de la Cerda, Cameron County Public Health Assistant Health Administrator. Oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we Held at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight for the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star span Banner yet wave for the land of the free and the home of the brave. Thank you, Dr. Isela, for the beautiful performance. We will now have our Pledge of Allegiance by Stephanie Martinez, Cameron County Public Health Epidemiologist. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And now, our Texas flag pitch, placenta by Ashley Gomez, Cameron County Public Health Preparedness Director. Honor the Texas flag, I pledge allegiance to thee, Texas, one state under God, one and indivisible. Thank you. You may be seated. Next up, I have the pleasure to introduce Ms. Carmen Salas, Chaplain and Pastor of Iglesia Cristiana Pacto de Amor, for this morning's invocation. Let's give a round of applause.
Good morning. To the leaders and dedicated professionals on all levels, federal, state, county, and city, to our command staff and responders providing services and information, to all our volunteers and general community who have contributed to the Cameron County Site Operation Border Health Preparedness OBHP, thank you. We are so honored and happy to celebrate our 25th anniversary, and I would like to invite you to pray, to pray with me or have a moment of silence if you prefer. Heavenly Father, today we lift up our voices in praise to thank you for the incredible volunteers who dedicated their time and energy to serve our community and to serve those around them. Equip them with courage and tenacity, with love and grace. We celebrate these individuals with gratitude and joy for all they do. We are very grateful for these selfless volunteers who constantly strive to make an impact in our community. Enable them to be rooted in your enduring love and trust so that they can carry out acts of kindness and love as conditions arise. May they never lose faith despite the challenges that may come their way. Give them the strength to persevere and the courage to reach even greater heights. Lead them down the righteous path and provide an armor of protection against any adversity that may arise. Provide them with joy and strength as they put all of their efforts into spreading love and care. Take care of their families and loved ones. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Thank you. And now, let's give a warm welcome to our Cameron County Judge, Eddie Trevino, Jr. Let's see. 12.02, good afternoon. Hello, everybody. Or do I say howdy, because I know we have a couple of Aggies out there. All right. Uh, see, if we, can, if we can say hello together and we can eat together, anything is possible, right? Including being able to cheer for each other once the SEC season begins. First of all, uh, on behalf of Cameron County, uh, I want to thank you all. Uh, it's been a pleasure since I've been in office a little over seven and a half years to see what a benefit and what growth this program has brought to our region. I want to commend Cameron County Public Health, Esmer, and her entire team. I want to thank the State Department of Health, and I want to, yes, absolutely. And I especially want to thank our members of our Texas State Guard and our military Too often, especially in this particular time frame in our, in our uh, lives, people focus on that which separates or divides us. And my preference has always been to focus on that which unites us and which makes us realize that we're all in the same game, even if we have a difference of opinion, which is absolutely, absolutely okay. But when we focus on those of the need, that need help, those that are sick, that need caring, um, I know that we're doing God's work. And I appreciate each and every one of you for doing that on a daily basis, for representing our state, for defending our country, and for blessing the United States of America. Welcome to Cameron County, and God bless you. Up next, we have our panel of distinguished guest speakers. It is my pleasure to introduce, in representation of Cameron County Commissioner Precinct 1, Sofia Benavides, we have Ms. Veronica de la Fuente, Outreach Community Worker. Let's give a round of applause. Thank you so much, Andrea. On behalf of Commissioner Sofia Benavides, I would like to offer our most sincere thanks to BISD for hosting us this week at Rivera High School. Thank you so much, Dr. Chavez. I'd also like to congratulate our Public Health Director, Esmeralda, Guajardo, I'm so used to calling her Esmer, so I'm just going to say Esmer. Uh, Guajardo and her amazing team. 
They are our, un our un unsung heroes who strive each day to ensure our residents have quality of care that is accessible and affordable. They work tire tirelessly to preserve, protect, and promote the well-being of our residents. In the summer of 1999, Operation Border Health Preparedness was created to help bridge the health care gap in providing essential health care services, such as providing free medical, dental, dental vision, and uh, services to residents along the U.S.-Mexico border. Over the 25-year span, OBHP has seen 212,328 clients collectively in Cameron, Hidalgo, Star, Willacy, and Laredo. These services expanded over the years to include emergency preparedness for, health, for the health departments, such as natural disasters or disease outbreaks. That preparedness over the past few years was put to the test during the COVID pandemic. Yesterday, uh, Commissioner Benavides had a chance to tour the site. She met many military staff, college students, and volunteers from states such as New York, South Dakota, and Pennsylvania, to name a few. Local residents also donated coffee, lunch, dinner, and snacks. This truly was a community, state, and national effort to provide free, accessible care to those who may not have otherwise been able to, see, to be seen by local medical professionals. Thank you once again to the volunteers, BISD, our county health department, the remote area medical volunteer corps, Texas Health and Human Services, Texas Military Department, as well as our legislators that continue to fight for funding to ensure this program continues for many years to come. Thank you very much. Up next, I'm honored to introduce Senator Morgan Lamantia for Texas Senate District 27. Good afternoon. And thank you so much. Thank you to all of our guest speakers and elected officials that are present here today. I want to acknowledge and thank the Texas military, our Texas Guard and their medical forces, Cameron County Public Health, BISD, DSHS, and every incredible volunteer organization that makes this event possible year after year. For a quarter of a century, this event has been essential to our community. And what's amazing about it is that even though it's been going on for 25 years, it's not the same event each year. Each year, our volunteers expand the event. They make it better. They listen to our community's needs, what they want to see next year, what they need help with, and they make it happen the next year. And even this year alone, we've had more people reach out to us and say, we want to be involved next year. How can we help? And it's because of the hard work that y'all do, the hard work our volunteers do, getting the word out and making sure that we're covering all the public health needs our community has. And that goes from getting school physicals, where families can address their medical, dental, vision needs, and where everyone leaves with just one less worry that year. When I think about the impact of this event, I think about the peace of mind it brings to our neighbors. It's the parents who breathe a sigh of relief knowing that their children are healthy and ready for the school year. It's the joy on the students' faces when they get their first pair of glasses. I know what that feels like. And the confidence of them knowing that we have access to essential medical services. And they make those contacts and make sure that they're available to them all throughout the year, not just on these wonderful days of this event. Effective public health programs translate to better health outcomes and economic benefits for the entire community. And preventive health services, like those offered here, save lives and help us to save on annual health care costs for our families and our communities. I just wanted to say thank you all for being here, for your dedication, and for your service to our community. We need it so much, and this event is truly unique and one of a kind, and that's all due to the efforts that each one of our volunteer organizations and our individuals that put this event together, all the effort that y'all put into it, and all the hard work and the care and love that we see at each and every one of these events. So thank you so much for all your hard work, and I hope to see this going for another 25 years and can't wait to see this again next year. So thank you all very much for your help with our communities. Thank you, Senator. Up next, we have Dr. Jennifer Shufort, Commissioner of Texas Department of State Health Services. So as Commissioner of DSHS, it is my great pleasure to be here with y'all today, celebrating 25 years of Operation Border Health Preparedness. 
Now DSHS takes great pride in this event and we're excited to help put this on every year. And I think one of the primary reasons is that our mission at DSHS is to improve the health, safety, and well-being of all Texans. And we often do that in this kind of uh, remote way, you know, by do, uh, developing policy or convening partners together. But this is a time we actually get to be hands-on. We get to go talk to community members. We get to meet them exactly where they're at and provide for needs. And so it is exciting for us to be a part of this every year. I think another reason why we love it so much is that we get to work with partners. I know there's a lot of times where during an event, we work with partners, and I can speak for myself during COVID being at the State Operations Center, that we had so many partners there. And I thought, you know, we all are aligned in what we're trying to do. And when we work together, it's not just additive. It can be synergistic, and that's so exciting. But then oftentimes those relationships kind of wither. But that's not true here. Every year, partners come together and, and those relationships strengthen over time rather than weaken. And so that is another exciting reason that we want to be involved in this. And lastly, it's an exercise. It, it is an exercise for disasters or public health emergencies. And we live in Texas. It happens more often than we would like that we are facing these um, disasters and emergencies. And this provides an opportunity for DSHS to really work those muscles and make sure that we are in the best shape possible to serve um, our communities in times of disaster. And because of this ongoing dedication of DSHS staff and all of our partners over 25 years, it just keeps getting better and better. It never looks the same year after year, but it gets better. And so last year, um, OBHP provided over 27,000 health services to over 6,600 individuals. And these are services like medical exams and vision exams and immunizations. And last year, over 1,000 animals were served as well with over 1,700 vaccinations given. And so, and we keep hearing about partners that want to become involved because this is such a fantastic event. I hear of other locations that want to try to emulate this because it is so successful and meaningful. And so this annual event is really something to be proud of. I am so thankful for my Region 11 staff that have planned um, for nine months um, to make this happen. And my DSHS staff from all around the state who have come here to participate. I am so thankful for our partners, especially our local health department partners um, who have command of their own sites and are doing wonderful things. And I'm thankful that I was invited. Thank you, Esmer, for inviting me to speak and be able to be here and address y'all. So thank you so much for having me. Let's give a warm welcome to Mr. David Gruber, Deputy Commissioner for Regional and Local Health Operations of Texas Department of State Health Services. Well, good afternoon, everybody. You've just heard from my commissioner, and, and as I look at the distinguished people um, here on the dais, I, it reminds me of an old comedian who was on the Johnny Carson show who said, you know, I sort of feel like in a sea of tuxedo shoes, I'm a brown loafer. And uh, I mean, we, you've just heard from some great people explaining what a great event this is. I have the, had the pleasure of first coming down here about 10 years ago and hearing about it and then being able to see it and truly appreciating the partnership, the service um, that are provided, the fact that thousands of people who would not necessarily get services receive the services, which serves them personally, but also serves the community as a whole. Um, I just wanted to acknowledge, and I, they, they're not, they're, they're gonna all of a sudden turn around and go, what do you mean? Um, our, our friends from Federal Health and Human Services in blue back there. Um, this is, the, you can wave your hand, guys. Thanks, thanks for being here, Health and Human Services. Um, they had been participating in this event back through about 2015 and then through circumstances we're unable to participate and are here again to observe so that we can hope we can bring them back in again in the future. So between our federal partners, between RAM, between our guard, between the health departments, between everything, it is probably one of the only events that I'm aware of in the country that brings together so many disparate groups in a uniform way 
and provide services to our community. So thanks to all. Thanks for everybody who's spoken before me who's really framed um, what we need to know. And uh, I look forward to being here next year. Up next, we have Dr. Jesus Chavez, Superintendent of Brownsville Independent School District. Thank you so much. Let me first uh, say that we give you a warm welcome on behalf of our faculty and staff, our students, and especially our board of trustees. Uh, I know our board president, Ms. Uh, Jessica Gonzalez, was here earlier and she was touring the operation and I know she was very, very impressed. She wanted to be sure that I said hello on her behalf. You know, as I uh, think of this event, uh, first of all, I want to congratulate everybody. 25 years of service of providing a lot of health services, a lot of information, uh, e even taking care of our pets, right? Th that is so wonderful and so great. So my congratulations to each and every one of you, particularly those of you, again, who have been with us uh, throughout the years. As uh, I, I visited uh, the school here and uh, saw the various people that are involved, uh, it, it brought back some memories as a child. Uh, I'm still called the new superintendent. I've only been here since November. But I, I mentioned my childhood because um, we actually had uh, Beulah, the Hurricane Beulah come through here. And uh, as best I can remember, I want to say that was uh, in the 60s, I don't know, 67, okay, 67. And so I was just a child at that point. And uh, I, I remember that event, and, and I wanted to tell you this, that uh, to our national, to our state guard, state national guard, I really have an appreciation for each and every one of you. And I say that because uh, when I was superintendent in, in Round Rock, I met a guardsman. And he was telling me about his visit to Brownsville. And, and I don't know whether that's the individual that I saw back when I was a child, but I've always had a great appreciation for our Texas National Guard. I have a great appreciation for our health service providers. And I say that I, I benefited from the services that the county and the state provided as a child growing up. So thank you so very much for being here in Brownsville ISD. Uh, it is our honor and our privilege to be your hosts, to be here and, and be able to help in a small way provide the great services that you provide to our community. So from the bottom of my heart, from Brownsville ISD, thank you for being here and we look forward to many more years of this partnership. You all have a great event. It's great to be here. Up next, we have Major General Anthony Woods with the Texas State Guard. Well, as, as I... Uh... Thank, thank you, Cameron County, and every, everyone uh, here on stage for, for allowing the, the State Guard to, uh, to be a part of this. You've, and, and we've been here for a while. I was looking over the, the videos as it goes back to 2005. And, of course, uh, I was in the National Guard in 2005 and, and didn't start coming to these events myself until around uh, 2017. But what, but what I want to do uh, is, is just for, just for a few, few minutes, uh, I, I want to take off the uniform. And, it, and I, I appreciate all of the, the kind words that, that have been said about the you know, State Guard service and our commitment to, to this com community in, in the state of Texas. But just as an individual growing up in Fort Worth, Texas, you know, I lived in government housing in, in you know, when I had a toothache, I, I was telling Jeff about this. You know, we had we had to go to John Peter Smith emergency room, and you know that doctor wasn't a pediatric dentist. You know, and after he slammed my hand down and told me to shut up, you know, he's sticking a needle in my mouth like, oh my God. 
But when I, when I walked the halls of Raymondville this, this morning, and, and I walked the halls here um, in Brownsville to, to, today, you know, looking at the, the faces of, of the parents and, and, and the children and, you know, and the future athletes and all the opportunities that have been, been provided here uh, for, um, for the Board of Health support. And then, you know, you, you meet guys like Eddie. You never, you never forget Eddie. Whenever you see him, he's going to stand out and, and, you know, and, and continue to work with Ram on, different, on other different projects. And for those of you who don't know, see, we, we're operating on basically three fronts as I speak now. You know, we have the, we have the board of support. And last week, you know, uh, uh, Hurricane Barrel came, uh, came, you know, barreling through Houston, Texas. And we had state guardsmen who lost power, lost food. But only after a couple of days, they were on the front lines. They were, they were helping those families who didn't have. But in addition to that, we still, we, 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 were, we were still excited about coming here today, this week, and serving, serving in our, in our cap capacity. We, we wear the uniform because it's a symbol. But up underneath that uniform are, are, are men and women who have gone through what a lot of those family members are, are going through. We are committed to service. We are committed to giving back. And, and that's just who we are. And for those of you who don't know, on a, on a lot of occasions, we do it voluntarily. Now, as I wrap this up, I just want a, the superintendent to know that the State Guard, we are, we are pushing initiatives for, for young people coming out of, out of high school. There are, there are opportunities for tuition reimbursement. There are opportunities for, for kids to, to receive their degrees. And there are opportunities for kids to serve without leaving home. So they can stay here and be here and give back when the time is needed. Now this is my last time here. I'll be retiring in the next couple of months. But I can tell you my, my, my time in the State Guard, my time here has been, been some, of the, uh, some of the most rewarding and most appreciated events I've ever been involved with. And so I want you all to know that it means a lot to me as an individual, but as a commander, it makes me proud because I can go back and appreciate and give back uh, to what my, my mother sacrificed, what she gave, and what all of you are giving and giving back to this great com community. So as I always ended, God bless all of you. God bless the United States of America. And may God continue to bless the great state of Texas. Thank you, Major Woods. <laughs> Lastly, it is my pleasure to introduce Jeff Eastman, Chief Executive Officer for Remote Area Medical. To put it in perspective, I feel like the ukulele player after Fleetwood Mac has just left the stage. <laughs> Ram has been partnering in border health, Operation Border Health Preparedness for over 10 years. Six years ago, it wouldn't be me up here on this stage. It'd be our founder, Stan Brock. Stan started RAM years ago. He started his journey as a, a young man uh, in his teens going to uh, South America, end up at the Brazil-Guyanese border. Reminded me very much that I came into McAllen, the savannas of Guyana. He was injured there, discovered up by Marlon Perkins, Mutual Mohawk's Wild Kingdom. Went off to a movie career and was successful making his own his movies as a flight pilot too. 
However, at the age of 49, Stan looked back. At 49, I was looking to retire. I'm like, okay, I got how many more years left, and I'm going to the house. And he started remote area medical, took everything he had, and started this organization. First seven years, we're down Central America, South America. However, in 1992, got a phone call from Sneedville, Tennessee, hospital closed. Sound familiar? Where I'm at in East Tennessee, we got hospital closures. Load up some great volunteers, pickup truck, a dental chair, treated 62 people. And the phone calls started coming day after day, week after week. And they still continue to come of people in need, just like not only here in the valley, but all across this country. We do over about 70 operations as this one, not near as big. By the way, it's very competitive. When my staff and volunteers go, oh, by the way, can I sign up for OBHP? And they said that to me yesterday. I said, you're standing in it. Go, no, I mean next year, because they want to be here. Okay? They want to come and they want to make a difference. We've got great, great volunteers that have come from all over the country to come down here to make a difference. They're so excited. And this morning it was over in a PS, uh, PSJA. It was pouring down rain. It's about 5.30 in the morning. There's about 75 people lined up, huddled against the wall, okay, waiting for this great team that's here to smile and say, and only one question, where does it hurt? And this team makes these individuals in the valley and everywhere that comes through and makes it easier for those decisions. They don't have to sit there and say, we put food on the table. Who's going to the doctor? It takes that burden of them off of it and makes it a difference. So on behalf of those patients that we've seen this week, I want to say thank you for everybody has been here. Thank you. And now, last but certainly not least, it's my pleasure to introduce Ms. Esmeralda Guajardo, Cameron County Public Health Health Administrator. Super low there. Um, well, you know what? I can't believe it's already been 25 years that we've been doing this. Um, and, you know, to the dismay of some of my younger employees, I was here in 1999. But um, because to them, not anything before 2000, you're just old. But um, no, true story. And so, um, and so, yes, I can't believe it's been 25 years since we've been here. And you know, we've been hearing a lot about how this has benefited the community. But I, I do want to talk about how this has benefited public health. And you know, back in I'm, I'm going to tell you a few stories. Back in 2006, we had a situation where we had a outbreak, hepatitis A outbreak, at a restaurant. And we expect a lot of people were getting sick at the hospital. I want to say if my memory serves me right, like about 30 some people were showing up at the hospital. They ate a certain restaurant. And so trying to work through that and trying to come up with a response, we knew the response was to do IgG, um, the injection for the IgG. And so um, the minute the, the restaurant offered to pay for all of the vaccines, which was the closest to, I remember, $85,000. Um, we had to, Cameron County Public Health, we had to sit down and figure out what the plan was. And I remember that day, like it was yesterday, and I sat down with Raquel Castillo, who is sitting over here in this corner. She is our chief epidemiologist. Um, and she and, she and I, you know what, and it, she and I both started back in 1999, the same year, 1999. So you want to give us credit for who started OLS? OBHP, go for it. But um, we started and we sat down and we came up with a plan. And so we had a, tr we had a staff meeting for some staff members that weekend. And it was, I think we found out on a Friday and on Saturday we had the meeting. And on Sunday, on Monday, it was a federal holiday, I remember, we were gonna start doing the vaccinations for the community. Lo and behold, you know, when we were having the meeting, I remember someone from the state saying, you know, this is exactly, after we did everything, talked about what the plan's gonna be, I remember someone saying, you know, this is exactly what OLS is trying to do. And I'm going to say OLS because that was the former name of Operation Board of Health, Operation Lone Star, because this is exactly what the point of Operation Lone Star is, so that we can, be, you know, so that y'all can be prepared. And I said, you know what, and of course I didn't think much of it, but that's one thing that stayed with me. And so um, we expected 300 people the first day we got 1,000. By the end of the week, we had 6,000 people that we had to take care of. And so, but we followed the same process, same structure as we do here. 
fast forward, um, 20, in 2015, I was appointed the health administrator of Cameron County, and I think everything came with me after that. In 2016, we had the, the Zika, where we were the, the only county <laughs> in Texas that, the, you know, the second one in the nation to have a Zika case. 2019, we had a dog seizure of 270 dogs and one cat. And then in 2020, we had a COVID pandemic, which everyone experienced. But I can tell you that in all those instances, two things stayed with me. One is these events from Operation Border Health Preparedness and OLS is what prepared us to where we are. But we couldn't be here without two things, I think, I believe. One of them is the support from your superiors, and for that I will thank Judge Trevino and, I will, um, and the commissioners. I'll t I, I've said this story before about Judge Trevino, and I'm gonna say it again. But, um, you know, when during the COVID pandemic, we had a situation where um, he was under a lot of pressure from the municipalities, trying to, for us to identify who the cases were. And it was case number six, I still remember it. And, you know, and it was a big misunderstanding and misdiagnosis from a patient I had received. So the person was out and about and was on social media, and, but everyone's like, oh, they identified this person as a COVID case. Um, and I remember, so everyone was calling the judge about how their law enforcement should become contact investigators. And so the judge, you know, he, he she, like I said, he was under a lot of pressure and we had a meeting and he's like, Esmer, I think we should do it. And I was like, no judge. And he's like, I think we should do it. And I said, you know what judge? And I said to him, I said, you know what judge? I feel so strongly about this that consider this my resignation if we do it. You know, and the judge could have said, there's the door. You know, cause maybe I would do that today. I don't know. But you know, he didn't. All he said was, you know what? Can everyone here leave the room except for me and Esmer? And he and I sat there and we talked and he, he gave me a reassuring speech, if anything, but during that conversation, he says, you know what, Esmer? He says, I will stay in my lane, and I'll let you stay in your lane, and Dr. Castillo stay in your lane. You guys tell me what needs to be done. And so, again, I think if it wasn't for that kind of support, I don't know, I don't know what we would have, where we would be today, and how successful this program can be. And I'm talking about the health department, but um, so thank you, Judge. I will always thank him. And then when 2016, he has his own story about 2016, how that's how I met him to tell him about Zika at his swearing in. I'm like, yeah. welcome to public health in Cameron County. But, you know, we have a joke in our department when things get stressful in our, with, for our program directors. It was like, quería la posición, meaning you wanted the position. You know, so it was one of those situations. But, but that was then, and so, you know, now the other component of this is that my staff, I, and I will probably speak, I will speak for every health administrator before me that has been through Operation Board of Health Preparedness, any health administrator in other counties, Eddie Olivares over there, but we can't do these things without our staff. And I, myself personally, I can talk about my department. I don't even have words for everything they've done from setting this up, you know, they tell me, just put the shirt on, do wear this color, I'm like, okay, to having someone that can sing, you know, and you know, these, I tell everyone, we're for, we're, they're not for hire, for party planning, they're not for hire. This is an internal thing, but, um, but, and I say it all the time, you know, I am one, but I, I, there's several behind me. And so staff, all of you, all my program directors, there's too many of you guys to thank. And I know there's a lot of people to thank for Operation Board of Health Preparedness, but I am dedicating this thanks to my staff this year. You guys, my last 25 years in been in public health have been amazing. And since 2015, I didn't think it could get better. But thank you all for everything that you do. I, I couldn't, I couldn't be here without you guys. So again, thank you all for being here and thank you for um, everything that y'all do. Okay. Thank you. With that, we conclude our VIP day ceremony.